Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I had just recorded the introduction but my voice always <sighs> gets ruined every time I, I try to talk to the camera. I don't know why. But happy Sunday! For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Rodriguez and I'm a first year medical student in Florida. Today is Sunday and I it's the first day in a long time that I get to do whatever I want and nothing school related, nothing uh, studying related for today. I'm gonna take a break so that tomorrow I can come back stronger. It is post exam day so not every Sunday is like this. Most Sundays I'm studying but today I decided to if, if I get to just reset for the next exam which is gonna be my last one my last big one then I have the cumulative and the, the anatomy practicals but that's it and um, I just wanted to like take a break set everything up for for the next studying period and I said why not make videos today since it's my quote-unquote free day um, but yeah I'm gonna work out and do things like that but today's video will be about PBL. I wanted to make this video a long time ago because we like we do PBL in my school from the very very first week um, and I, I just think it's such a valuable part of the curriculum and I wanted to talk about it in terms of, of like why you should apply to a school that has PBL program and yeah this is going to be the video so if you're interested and you just want to know how we learn and why I think it's this curriculum is awesome. Just stay with me. So first of all, what is PVL? So PVL stands for Problem-Based Learning and for some programs, medical school programs, they're taking it as their main main type of learning but in my school we do it every other day but still we have lectures and still we have clinical skills and still we have you know the the, the general traditional type of learning but along with it we have PBL which kind of like reinforces the stuff that we're learning in class and <laughs> yeah I am gonna explain a little bit of how the logistics go so basically we meet every other day, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 a.m. to 12. That's my, my most productive time and I like it because of that. that at that time, I'm ready to go, I'm motivated because it's my, my most productive time. Then I get lunch time and then I have my afternoon long, but <laughs> yeah. And then we have a group of like eight or nine students. My first group was nine students and the one that I have now is eight. So in, in just my first semester, we have had two groups because they changed us just for us to, you know, connect with other students and, and socialize a little bit more than now that we are online. But yeah, it's about eight to nine students and then a facilitator, which is a professor um, that, you know, have, has experience on doing this. But mainly it is a student guided process in which we learn from a case that they give us. The case they start by giving us general information and, um, you know, uh, chief complaints, um, background about the patient. And it's really, like, I feel like it pushes us to learn. And we start making hypotheses based on what we get. And then we, we as we get more information, we start building out what is called learning outcomes. And these learning outcomes are what would you like to know from this case that you can apply to many other things and I just think it puts a lot of responsibility as us and student as students and it makes us um, it makes it be a lifelong learning process it teaches us how to find um, you know reliable research how to find um, how to construct a PowerPoint, how to present a PowerPoint, which are skills that you're going to need forever, right? Because every specialty that you're going to go into as a doctor, you might have to uh, give a presentation on something later on and you want to be more educated. Uh, you want to be educated enough in that concept in order to present it with confidence. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I talk a lot, but yeah, that's mainly the logistics of it. 
and for my school they are great writers I don't know how they do it but I think they do such a great job at writing up these cases and they have multiple parts so they will give us like two parts the first day let's say Monday and then we go ahead and create learning outcomes present those learning outcomes and on Wednesday they give us another part of the case and it will take around three or four PVL sessions to cover one case but every um, every time we make a new presentations and new things to cover and as they um, kind of like give us more information about the case we learn even more and it's not only about get into the diagnosis but also learning the process of it and learning um, things that we could use in other circumstances as a doctor. It's just important information that is often related to what we're learning in the lectures. So we do have two lectures every day and we have no exclusions <laughs> except for better on say which is next week but every day we will have two lectures that's a, a given right <clears throat> but they will try to relate whatever case we're working on on PBL to those lectures and it just keeps us engaged and gives us responsibility as students for our own learning it's a very student guided learning and I think I'm gonna tell you guys what um what makes it be a great PBL session uh, in a minute but if it is well established and it is a good productive session it is a very valuable part of a medical school curriculum but I'm gonna give you some examples of what I have presented about it's not even what all of my classmates have presented about but um, just for you guys to see how many things we can learn from just doing these cases I'm in case number 10 right now and I feel like I have learned so much and my exams are will also have like three or four questions from those cases that we're doing for that particular time period so for example I have presented about hemophilia blood, blood tests that are ordered for different things um, how to analyze uh, complete blood count or CBC how to analyze peripheral blood smears, what is, it, what is a left shift, for example. Those of you that are in medical school will, will kind of like know more what I'm talking about, but just for you guys to have an idea of, of the stuff that we covered that is not, is maybe touched on on the lectures, but PBL is just another opportunity to kind of like dig in more into it and really understand what these concepts are about and they're not covered extensively in the lectures. So I have learned about the physical exams in a pregnant woman, physical exam in infants, pediatrics, um, serodermapimentosum, Dijorsch syndrome, how to address non-compliant patients, hypertension, low-carb diet, diabetes mellitus, type 2, markers for cancer, cancer stage in a metata met metastasis, sorry, liver enzymes, COPD, urinary tract infections, <coughs> inflammatory bowel diseases, um, causes of respiratory, genetic causes of respiratory distress in children, fat soluble vitamins, antidiarrheals. I have presented also about antibiotics like cephalosporins. Um, this is just a lot of application of knowledge. These are not all the presentations. I have given so many presentations. Like we give presentations every other day and we just get used to finding where to find it. Um, the sources that I have found most has helpful when learning about all of these is up to date. I mentioned it in one of my videos about resources and Medscape is also a good one. Um, but I usually look up on PubMed, really scientific methods. And sometimes I will look at a YouTube video but it's not a, my reference. It will just guide me through what information I have to find. But we really base our presentations on scientific articles, scientific research, things like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's just allowing us to think critically and think, use these skills that we will use when we are um, on call or we are in our preceptorships, which are happening next semester. It's really going by so fast, guys. Now, um, next semester, I'm going to for sure move 
to my school because I'm, we're doing like two days of the weeks in person um, so that we can do some clinical skills and some preceptorship. So we're going to um, be in the clinic um, with a doctor and learning from them and I'm just really excited and <laughs> really happy to at least you know make connections and if it wasn't for PBL I really feel like I will feel more isolated uh, in this time of COVID because that's the group that I usually see every other day and uh, up to now I really like all of my classmates the first group and the second group so it's it has just been another way to connect and just to talk to people. Um, my facilitators are great as well. Um, it just takes a village, you know, and everybody needs to be connected. Everybody needs to be willing to learn, excited. Everybody needs to, um, you know, collaborate and respect each other's opinions. That's, that's what makes it a good productive session. If everybody is just jumping on each other and just talking over each other which has not happened yet then it's not gonna be a good session but up to now i have had really great experience with pbl and i really really recommend for you to apply to a school that has it because i know it's a lot of work i complained a lot <laughs> to my family and my boyfriend everybody about it because we literally have to prepare presentations every other day like it's crazy but um, at the end of the day, it's useful and it trains us. And it's just five minute presentations. They require work, but it's just training us for the real world and what's going on. It, when you're going into medical school, you want to learn as much as possible. And this is just a great opportunity to uh, put on those skills and uh, put in practice that. Um, those skills of our lifelong learner. <laughs> so yeah, guys, thank you so much for being with me today. And I'm gonna be putting more videos more um, more often. I just need to plan out better when I'm going to film it and all this stuff because it depends. It depends if my parents are here and there just making no noise outside. It depends on if I have a lot of work to do that day. If you want to see more blog style videos, those are better because I get to film during my day. So if you like to see those, I'll be happy to do more of those. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.